is Messi. It is the cleanest of clean finishes from the best on the planet. It's time for the biggest sports stories. Liverpool, the champions of Europe, are top of the world. The biggest interviews. That uh, such a great spectacle is ruined by such such thuggish behaviour. And all the analysis. Right here. He's the one player that has the arrogance to think that he can play in any stadium in the world and any pitch in the world in front of any player in the world and take them on. Every weekday, it's my sport, it's your sport. It's CFM Sport. Let's join the team for the biggest show in the world of sport on ZFM Stereo. My station, your station. Every Thursday, we bring you closer to your sports stars on this show. The show that's short, sharp, and sweet. Welcome to it. This is ZFM Sport on a Thursday, Throwback Thursday, the lockdown edition. My name is Sean Tafrenika. I'm the producer of ZFM Sport, coming at you from my dining room table, which I've turned into an office. And I hope you're listening to this in the comfort of your home while you're being safe. The handle is at ZFM Sport on Facebook and Twitter for any interaction you wish to have with us. So do hit us up. Our sports star on tonight's show powered by DSTV is a footballer who's got a deft left foot and the technique to match. I'll give you a hint. He's a Caps United legend and a former Warriors midfielder. Hi, I'm Warriors coach Zdravko Logarusic and you are listening to ZFM Sport. Sports with a difference. It's fitting that a week after we celebrated Mother's Day, we get to hear from the soccer star that was officially known as Mother. His name is Sifas Chimeza. He is without doubt one of the finest footballers to come out of Zimbabwe and was rightfully crowned as a soccer star of the year in 2004 after inspiring Caps United to league and cup glory. Sifas Mother Chimeza was also part of Zimbabwe's 2006 Afghan side and he scored in that famous 2-1 win over Ghana. Tonight we get to hear his story, starting from his formative years as a batting talent in his schoolboy years. I was born on the 5th of December 1984. I did my grade 1 in 1991 at Chikurubi Support Unit Primary School and my grade 7 at the same school in 1997. Then in 1998, I went to Marlborough High, Form 1, and Form 2, 99, I did there. And then in uh, 2000, from there, I went to Churchill Boys High and also for my O level in 2001. Then I had to repeat from 4 in 2002 because I missed my my O level exams due to national team commitments. My first time to be with the national team of Zimbabwe, I was in Form 4. It was in October in 2001. There was a selection uh, of uh, one best players that had to go to play against Zambia. We went there and it was just before my O-level exams. So, <laughs> Raman Gumbo, the coach who was coaching at that time, he said to me, look, see first, with the, with the school, you can always repeat, but football opportunities, you never know. So I went for the football over the exams. So that's about it, about my education. It's a grade 1 to 7 at a Chikurubi Support Unit Primary School, Form 1 and Form 2 at Mowbray, Form 3 and Form 4 at Churchill. That was it. Growing up where well, my role models, oh, it was difficult to have any. I think I, you could uh, say my mom because she always found ways to make, to make things for us easy. Even when uh, everything seemed like lost, my mother always came up with a solution. So she was my role model. Growing up in a police camp like I did, uh, you always look up to to all those police officers, their discipline and and stuff. So I just wanted to be like them, to be also disciplined, to be a good uh, role model in the society like they were back then. <laughs> 
So that's about it. Then uh, later on, it uh, it was my brother Elton. It's like when he went to secondary at Mavukai, I always looked up to him, especially when it came to football. He was the guy I looked up to when he was playing. You know, now we're at high school. He's coming from a primary school at a support unit and now he's mixed with all those boys from the ghetto but he was holding his own, he was playing and uh, in Form 1 he was captain, in Form 2 he was captain. So I was always like, okay, if he can do it, I will do it also. So Elton uh, played a big part in uh, molding me and making me want more in my football career. Sifas Chimeza made his Premier League breakthrough while in high school for Dynamos as part of Moses Chunga's youthful side dubbed Kidnet. He would then cross the divide and join Cross City rivals Caps United where he established himself as one of the best players in the league. Uh, in uh, 1999, that's when I joined uh, Dynamos Juniors. That was uh, with the under-15s and then in... Uh, 2000 I went to the under 17s and in 2001 I was now in the reserve team and it was in the same year that I got to play with the first team around in August of uh, 2001 my first match was against the F4 flats I was lucky it was uh, during the time of of Moses Chunga as coach and uh, at that time he was uh, promoting a lot of young boys and uh, I got my chance that time. It was with uh, that uh, team, the Kidnet guys. So we came through together from Churchill and then to the first team. So it was a bit easy for uh, for me to get in the team because the supporters knew like, okay, these young boys, they are kind of special. So they were patient with us. And uh, I have to thank the boys who were promoted earlier before me, the likes of uh, Samson Chorua, Eddie Mashiri, Leo Kroos, and uh, Norman Maroto, because when they got in the first team, they played so well. They did so good that it became easy for other boys coming through to be accepted and to be given that time to show what they were made of. So, yeah, in 2001, that's when I got in the team. But it was uh, at the beginning... When I was with the reserve team, when I first joined, and then you are now there with the with the guys who were your heroes growing up. You are now there with Makwinji Somati, Richard Mumsa, Nuloi Dimtasa, Masimba Dinero, Kalisto Pasua. You are now training with them. You are now on the same bus with them, going to training and after training in the dressing room and stuff and stuff. Yeah, it was a bit uh, <laughs> exciting. And uh, yeah, it was exciting. I have to say, I was never, I never felt out of place because I always believed in my qualities. But sometimes, you know, when you are a young boy and you are training with those older, older guys, for them it was a, uh, they were doing a job. So sometimes in training them, they will be a bit tough on you, like. Uh, you, you misplace a pass, you know, the shouting will be too much or if he shouts, if he asks the ball, you are like, oh, I should, I should give it to him, I should pass the ball to him. Sometimes you don't have that freedom because in a way they, they are bullying you, but not in a bad way, they just bully you in a certain way that you can't be yourself. They always have to say something to you, which if you are not strong enough, you will break down. But it was a good time for me. So in Zim, uh, 2001, that's when I made my debut. Then I stayed with Dynamos 2002, 2003, until I moved to Caps United in 2004. But in 2003, I have to say, at Dynamos, that was my best time with Dynamos. When we had to beat Dyna- uh, Highlanders in the back-to-back games. Yeah, those were memorable times. And then this, if I need cup against the Highlanders again in BF, we won a uh, 3-0, I think. So with Dynamos, those were my highlights. And then uh, Caps United, yeah, everyone knows about our 2004 team winning three trophies in the uh, Soccer Star of the Year. 
Then uh, it was in the same time that I got to be in the national team. I, I was first selected in the national team when I was in Form 4, when I was at Dynamos, before I even made my debut. So I went to play with for the national team in Zambia. Then after that, I made my Dynamos debut. Chimeza's talents were getting attention from beyond Zimbabwe's borders and it was hardly surprising when he packed his bags and headed to Europe and in the process, turning down South African giants, Kaiser Chiefs. Then uh, in 2005, in uh, June, that's when I moved to Belgium. But uh, it was not before I had signed with Kaiser Chiefs in South Africa. I signed for a pre-contract with Kaiser Chiefs. But uh, yeah, it was just a pre-contract. So when I heard that there's interest from Belgium, I said, okay, forget about South African Kaiser Chiefs. I'm going to Belgium. So 2005, I joined the Gemini Bishkot in Belgium. Yeah, in Belgium, it was a bit uh, tough because when I was uh, in Zim, that's when I signed my contract. I signed my contract in Zim. I never went to Belgium for that. No. Yeah, it was kind of a draft contract. So with the European things, they always talk about how much money you earn in a year rather than what we do in Zimo. You will say, I earn this much in a month or what they do in England to say that you earn so much in a week. So they told me, okay, Sifas, you are going to earn so much in a year. But I said, okay, I don't understand that. Then they just did the simple calculation to say okay the that amount we told you divided by 12 but when i came to belgium to really sign the official contract it was not like that because certain money has to go to this place certain money has to do like that from that yearly salary that they tell you so what happened was now when i was in belgium the money they had told me when i was in zimbabwe was low for my monthly <laughs> salary and we had a problem with that but they told me like okay you have to choose to sign it or go back to zim you know the kind of option they gave me it was a lose lose situation i was going to lose either way to sign that contract or to go back to zim i signed and then they were like okay with time if you are a regular if you show then we are going to improve your salary but it never came then uh, the same year in December, I said to them, okay, I'm out of here. We agreed. Then I was out of there. So 2005, December, I stopped football in Belgium, but I had to go to play with the national team at the Afghan in uh, Egypt. I had a good tournament there, and everyone was expecting big things af after that. But wow, I stayed in Zim for six months. I was clubless. I never touched my football shoes six months I stayed in Zim then 2006 uh, in June I had to go to to a team in Hungary but I had to go through Belgium because that team had a working relationship with another team in Belgium so I was out of shape I went to the team in Belgium where I had to train with them a bit then to go to Hungary when I trained with the team in Belgium they said okay I think this guy is uh, good enough to stay here in Belgium. So they gave me a contract there. Uh, that was in St. Saint Tr Saint Truden. I stayed there for four years. Yeah, best times of my career. And at uh, that time I was now playing in midfield. Actually, I was a number 10, like a creative top number 10. <laughs> yeah, I was good, I have to say. <laughs> So yeah, four years in a central day. and then after that, in two in 2010, I got injured my knee on my knee. I had an operation, and unfortunately, I got injured at the end of my contract. I had said I'm not going to extend my contract because it was time for me now to go to a better league, better teams, and yeah, uh, at that time I was talking to Feyenoord in Holland. So they were also happy to get me on a free transfer, but then I got injured. And from there, everything just went downwards. Yeah, downhill. I ended up stopping with football because uh, all the teams now were like, oh, okay, the kind of knee injury you have, it's a bit risky for us to take you. 
So in 2012, it's after I joined another team, then I decided to just talk because I was no longer having fun. I could always feel the knee was not in, in order and I knew that my dream of going to play in a bigger team, bigger league was good as dead. So I stopped football. A rather tragic end to his career for Sivas Chimeza, just when he was on the cusp of joining Dutch club side Feyenoord and going on to big and better things, he hung up his boots. He currently resides in Belgium where all hope is not lost as there could be another Chimeza soccer star on the way. Uh, at this given moment, I'm no longer into football. I'm only doing some trainings with my son who is 8 years old and he loves football so much. He is the only one I'm doing some trainings with. But for the rest, yeah, I I partnered with uh, some guys who do a lot of investments. They do like, uh, they've got nightclubs, so they ask me to put in some money, then they do the rest. So for me at this moment, it's being a father and nothing much. See, Sifas Chimeza, mother. Those cornrows earning him that nickname. I remember Caps United was on TV a lot during that 2004 title winning season. And if there was one thing that made me enjoy watching Silvers Chimeza was his technique. The way he manipulated the ball, his chest control, his first touch, the way he could whip that ball with his left foot. What a player. And let me tell you some secrets about Sifas. He's actually funny, he's got a really good sense of humor, and he's a passionate sports fan. And it's not just with football, he loves his Formula One and his tennis. Many thanks to him for taking the time to speak to us. Time is running out on the show, but before we wrap it up, I gotta tell you that there are over a dozen channels of theme sport 24 hours a day, but only one with a premium mix. Super Sport 1 will take a look back at the money fight between Mayweather and McGregor, an old German Champions League final, a heartwarming Russell Crowe sports movie, and on top of that, add a captivating 30 for 30 documentary about a youngster who inspired millions of Latinos. So come and see what the viewer's choice and primetime segments have in store for you on our premium channel, Supersport 1.